Hello everyone and welcome to the Bulldog Show. I'm Darrell Allen. I'm with Thomasville High School head football coach Jonathan DeLay. Dolls go to 1-0 in the region, 4-1 on the year, getting set to go to Hazelhurst to take on Jeff Davis this week. And we'll talk about that ball game coming up in, 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 in just a moment, Coach. But first of all, we haven't had a chance this year for you to for you to introduce and talk about your coaching staff a little bit. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Yeah, so I've got, you know, 12 assistants and they do a really good job for me. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you got uh, offensive coordinator Israel Troop. He came to us from Ware County. Uh, he was a, uh, a player at Georgia when I was there as a student assistant, so that's where we met each other. He's done a really good job coming in and really taking a lot of things off of my plate. He's able to, you know, one, the kids love him. He's a great coach, uh, but he's able to script that game plan and get stuff rolling. He came right in, jailed really well with the rest of the offensive staff. Then I got Parker Rents, who's been with me all three years. He's my O-line coach. He's a strength and conditioning coach. He does a great job coaching those uh, offensive line guys, uh, and, it's, and it's paying dividends. He's doing a really good job in the weight room, too. Uh, former player, Tory Sapp, coaches wideouts with Coach Troop. Uh, another one, I mean, he's, he's a young coach learning, and he's doing a fantastic job growing as a coach, uh, and he has a real good relationship with those players. Uh, Wesley Clay is another one. He coaches our – Running backs, Wesley actually played for me at Franklin County. My first year coaching, he was a senior in high school. Uh, now he's here coaching the running backs. He's been here for three years. Another former player at Thomasville, Larry Williams, uh, coached him in 17 and 18. He's, he helps Coach Rents with the offensive line. Uh, Ray Gordon is our tight ends coach. Uh, comes to us from where as well with Coach Troop. On the defensive side of the ball, Clay Hodges, who played here, uh, is our defensive coordinator. Really good job. You know, he stepped right in. Uh, when Coach Jones retired this past uh, offseason. His dad's a legend here. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> dad's a le legend, Clay's a legend here in his own mind. So, uh, but, uh, you know, the thing about Clay, uh, he was on that, the 02, 03, 04 teams the last time we won three straight region championships. Uh, Doug Stanford came to us from Tifton. He's our defensive line coach. Uh, he's, he does a really good job. He does the weight room down for the middle school, um, and he's my guy that, that does a lot of logistical stuff from buses to food to things like that. Uh, a Thomasville legend, maybe the Thomasville legend, Coach Willie Frederick. Uh, you know, a lot of the kids know him as Coach Bill, uh, but Coach Fred's done a done a tremendous job. He's been here longer than I have, um, and he does a really good job with our kids. He coaches our defensive ends. And, and, and Clay's, Clay's dad, who coached Coach Bill in high school, refers to him as pound for pound, the best player you ever coached. Yes, that's that's yeah. the thing. He said he weighed like 140 pounds as a senior. He played linebacker, and uh, yeah. he was he was a guy. Another former Bulldog, Stacy Murray, he coaches our linebackers. He's been with me all three years. Uh, does a great job over there on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Bruce Bryant helps in our secondary, helps Coach Hodges with the secondary. Uh, he's in his second year, came to us from, uh, from Cairo, but he's from Mitchell County. And then Coach J.R. Robinson, who's on our middle school staff last year. Again, he helps Coach Clay with our DBs, specifically our Rovers. Um, and so I've got a really good mix of some veteran coaches and some young coaches, and they work so well together. And that trickles down into our team, and that's what that connection piece is about. You know, coach to coach is big, and that trickles down into coach to player, player to player, player back to coach. So I'm the staff that I have this year is phenomenal. They allow me – to be the head coach. I have my hands in the offense, the defense, and the special teams instead of just focusing solely, you know, on making sure the offense is right. I feel I feel more connected to all phases of the game this year because of this group of 12 men. And I think it's really neat, Coach, that you have so many former Bulldogs mm -hmm. on the staff. And, and, and all, all coaches are intense and uh, competitive and all that, but these guys understand how important this is to Thomasville. Oh, yeah, they played right out there on that field at Veterans yeah. Memorial Stadium. They know what football's like here at Thomasville. And it's great to have those guys on your staff to, to tell, you know, the kids and to show the kids, hey, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what it should look like. This is how we do things. And, you know, that's, that's crucial for us because – I want the kids to understand the tradition and the history of Thomasville football and what better way than having coaches that have been there and done that. All right, Coach, talk a little bit about yourself. Now, you mentioned coaching at Franklin County. Uh, uh, you played high school ball, went to Georgia with a yeah. Talk a little bit about all that and your start. Yeah, so, you know, the way I got And your dad was a coach. Yeah, my dad's a, my dad's a coach. He's a, he worked in the school system uh, all his life, and he kind of coached everything, football, baseball, basketball, whatever, uh, wrestling, wrestling. Uh, Always was at the gym growing up. When I was a senior in high school, Coach uh, Welch actually left Thomasville, came and coached me in high school uh, at Lafette. 
And, uh, you know, he had some connections with some folks at Georgia, and I got a job as a student assistant coach there, worked for four years. Uh, I'm also married to Coach Welch's daughter. So, you know, if he didn't, uh, if he didn't take that step to, to come to Lafette from Thomasville, because I'm just going to tell you, we weren't a football powerhouse, okay? <laughs> um, you know, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair today. Uh, but I was able to work at Georgia for four years. Then I got a job at Franklin County. Worked there for six years. It's it's right near the South Carolina border, kind of near Athens, Clemson, South Carolina, that area. Worked there for six years. It was great. Uh, came to South Georgia. Actually worked a year at Central, and I've been at Thomasville now. This is my eighth season here, um, and that feels like you know I can remember stuff from '17, which is my first year. Right. You know, plays we ran, things like that. Um, it feels like it was just yesterday, but sometimes it feels like it was so far away. You know, I walk through those halls and the field house and see pictures of kids that I've coached. Heck, I've got one that's on the staff with me right now. Uh, I coached against Sapp, but Coach Williams, you know, he's, he was he was there for two of my years that I was here. So uh, it, it's neat and unique. Uh, you know, I consider myself still to be a young coach, but there's only like three coaches on my staff that are older than me, so I guess I'm one of the old guys now. Um, but I love coaching ball, love Thomasville. Uh, it's a great place to be. You know, my, my wife's from here, her family's from here. Uh, her mom and dad are here, her grandparents are here, aunt and uncles are here. So it's, it's, it's felt like home. I appreciated the people welcoming me in for these past uh, eight to nine years. But, um, you know, this is home for me. Coach, when you were at Georgia, Coach, Coach Rick was there. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that has a lot of influence on everybody around him. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coach Rick gave me, gave me a job and uh, – let me volunteer as a student assistant. And I, and I had, I went all the way from, you know, the first tasks that I had, they taught me how to break down film. So input film all the way up to, you know, I signaled defenses. Uh, and then in the final game we were there, we had some staff change before the bowl game. So I actually got to be a position coach okay. on the field. Um, so that was kind of fun. Guys that I worked with have gone on to do some really good things. I mean, one of the guys I worked with is a student assistant, Todd Hartley. He's the tight ends coach at Georgia now. Uh, the guy that replaced me as a student assistant, uh, Mike McDonald, he's the head coach for the Seattle Seahawks now. So oh, wow. um, there's there's a lot of things in, uh, in and around there, people you meet, people you know. Um, you get to do a lot of cool things. And that's where I met Coach Troop. You know, he was a player. I was a student assistant. He always jokes because uh, we had a coach, his name was John Fabris, and he coached uh, the punt team and the kickoff team and defensive ends. And I love Coach Fab. Like he was, he taught me how to be attention to detail, OCD, things are supposed to happen a certain way. And I had to take role in, in his special teams meetings. Well, you know, you had to look at the board, see where you were and be in there. And I was taking role and Troop went in there. So I had to go into the to the uh, locker room and get him. He always tells the story. He's like, I'm not on the list. And I had to take him over and say, there you are right there. <laughs> and he took that one. And, you know, but Coach Fab really taught me a lot about, you know, being that even the smallest task is important. And that's, you know, that's football. I try to take that to the kids as well. Coach, when we talk about football today and football programs, it's not about what just happens in the fall. There's so much more that goes before it goes into that. Talk a little bit, of, first of all, let's talk about the nutrition program. Being a member of the Booster Club, we hear a lot about nutrition. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, we try to do, we try to feed our kids as much as possible. So in the, And that's year-round. Yeah, that's year-round. So in the off-season, in the weight room, every every day that we lift, after we finish lifting Coach Rents, make sure that we have protein and some kind of snack for the kids. A lot of times it's a honey bun. Just to put back those calories that they just lost lifting, and we try to make sure we have that protein in that milk so that we can – continue to build those pounds in the off season. We'll have certain times too in the off season where we might just, you know, hey, today we're going to feed the kids and the Booster Club does a great job allowing us to do that. When we get into the summertime, uh, so we bring our kids in in the morning so that we can feed them breakfast and lunch. Uh, the summer feeding program does a really good job providing each one of our kids with a meal for breakfast. We practice lift, watch tape, then we go and eat lunch. Um, in the in the fall, starting in the fall, so on Sundays we bring the kids in for film and we always feed them a meal at the end of that film time, whether it's pizza or something that the Touchstone Club purchases for us. Uh, this past week, actually, uh, some of our just fans had a big, it was almost like a big block party Sunday. They, they grilled out for high school team, the middle school team, and the cheerleaders all just kind of hanging out in the stadium. So that was huge. Uh, but then on, starting on Wednesday nights, our dads cook hot dogs and french fries for our guys, 
And then Thursday mornings, our moms come in and cook breakfast after practice. Uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, Zacadoos provides us with a team meal. We're so thankful to them. They do such a great job. All, you know, all I'll tell them is this is the time I need to pick it up. I get it. And we go, Dwayne over there does a really good job. And then Friday mornings, we do a church breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and they feed us, you know, the whole spread. And then Fridays after school, Miss Thelma Bates and her staff, they feed us pregame meal. Um, and then if we're on the road, the Touchdown Club, you know, feeds us another meal after the game uh, for the kids to eat on the ride home. So, you know, we're feeding these kids all the time, and it's all because of the support of members who donate money to that Touchdown Club. And boys that age coach can eat. They can eat. <laughs> they really can eat. All right, something new uh, this year, in, 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 as far as we're concerned, it's not new to, new, new to Georgia High School, is the, the power ranking. And, of course, we can't go detail by detail and tell you this is what exactly is going to happen. But kind of give us a little bit of an overview of that. Yeah, so I know in the power rankings that this is what they say how they're eva or equated. Your win percentage plus your opponent's win percentage plus your opponent's opponent's win percentage. Okay. So it drills down a long way, and there's – you know, for a home win, you get 0.9 points. For a road win, you get 1.1 points. Um, I actually haven't seen them, all right? I know they're out there. That's just kind of stuff that I, I want to take care of our business. And I, and I know it's important. Like right now, we've got to – we're in the mindset of we've got to win all these region games so we can win our region and get one of the top seven seeds. And then after that, that's when it goes to all those power rankings. The thing about it is, you know, we play a tough non-region schedule. So those teams that we play, a lot of those teams that we play, we think, you know, they're going to go and win a bunch of ball games. So that, that can help us. And that's where, you know, early on when the rankings come out, if you're not at a certain level, you know, if you keep winning, yeah, your points can go up. But if your opponents that you play keep winning as well, then it's like your points are doubling right. So as you go up. But – the biggest thing we can control right now is trying to go 1-0 and each week in this region to go and have a chance to win the region and, and uh, get one of those top seven seeds. Hopefully our power rankings allow us to get one of the top two seeds if we can be a region champion. And that means, that means the, more, the higher you are in a power ranking, the more home games you're going to have during the playoffs. Correct, correct. And we know that if you're the first or second place team in the, out of those region champions, you get – you're at home the entire playoffs. There are no coin flips because right. the last round would obviously be uh, at the bins. Okay, all right. So we'll we'll do our best as the season moves along to keep you up to date with that. But uh, like you said, Coach, a lot of it's just not going to be known until it's all over with. It, it really isn't. And you know? it can change drastically week to right. week depending on what your opponents do and the opponent's opponents do. All right, Coach, we move on to the schedule this week, uh, go 1-0 and in the region, and we get set to go to, to uh, Jeff Davis to, or to Hazelhurst to face Jeff Davis. I know a lot of questions about – by the time this airs, we'll know probably yeah. about, 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 about when, uh, when we're going to be playing. We just don't know that yet. Correct. You know, we got weather coming in this week potentially. So we're, we've been staying in contact, Jeff Davis and myself, just about, you know, what do we want to do about playing the game. The biggest thing is, you know, we're worried about safety. Right. right? Making sure that we get our kids to and from uh, Hazelhurst safely. It's a two-and-a-half-hour trip. So we want to make sure that we're doing right by – Everybody involved, not just our kids, but our band, our fans, our cheerleaders, all those different groups that have to make that trip there and back. Um, but you know, as soon as as soon as we know, we'll push it out on social media. Right. Uh, we'll get it on the school website and things like that. So, um, biggest thing is we got to play this game. It's a region game. Right. We got to go right. play the game. Um, we want to make sure that we're taking all the precautions necessary to make sure we get that done. All right. Jeff Davis coach, they come in four and one just like us, but but they're zero and one in the region. They they fell last week to Brantley County, probably a game they didn't expect to lose. Yeah, I mean it surprised me when I saw it, and then when I watched the game, I understood why it happened. Uh, Jeff Davis is really they're really good on special teams. They do a lot of stuff, and they're really well coached on special teams. And they gave up three special teams touchdowns. I mean they had over Jeff Davis had over four hundred yards of offense, only gave up about eighty something yards of offense. But special teams is huge, and that's what I've tried to preach to our kids this week, look, they're a really good special teams team, and they didn't play well in special teams last Friday night. They're going to be foaming at the mouth on special mm -hmm. teams this week, so we have got to lock in in that phase. Um, offensively, they run a, a triple option offense. It's not exactly like Pelham's. They're not split back there. They're a double slot option, and they will run some wing tee stuff in there. So eye discipline is key. 
uh, on defense. So we got to do our job. We got to make sure we're tackling the fullback. We have a guy for the quarterback, a guy for the pitch. And then our second and third level guys got to read high hat, low hat to see if it's run or pass. We had a really good day yesterday of prep for it. Uh, we've got another one coming today. Our kids understand the sense of urgency. I've been talking to them about, hey, you got to be prepared to play any day from Wednesday to Saturday this week. So your urgency has got to be through the roof. Um, defensively, they're a 3-3 stack, and they do a lot of blitzing out of their three interior linebackers. And that's the defense we haven't seen this year. So we, I thought we did well yesterday handling it at practice, and our scout team did a phenomenal job. Uh, we put some – some guys in some different spots. They have some quick defensive linemen, so we put some linebackers down there to simulate that quickness. Uh, and I was really pleased with what the, our kids did yesterday handling it. But the biggest thing is on offense, we've got to have ball security. We've got to maximize our possessions because this team will try to control the ball. And then we've got to start fast in both halves. I mean, we've kind of talked about it here on the show. Mm -hmm. But we got to be fast in our opening, how we open the game and how we open the second half and how we close both of those halves. And that's, you know, I know that's a lot of coach speak. You want to be on the gas the whole game, but it, there's a lot of truth to it. You know, you want to have that mindset of here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, Coach. You never know when you're playing, especially when you're playing a good football team, and they are a good football mm -hmm. team. Coming off a loss, how will they respond? Yeah. And I mean, that, that's it, kind, of, it's kind of scary a little bit. Yeah, we're going to get their best shot. Yeah. I mean, and that's – and that – one, that comes with being Thomasville. People are going to give you their best shot, but two – coming off the loss they're coming off of last week, they know that, hey, we can't – they can't fall to 0-2. Um, right. And, you know, so we're going to get everything. We're going to get every trick. We're going to get every, you know, fake, everything that they can possibly throw at us, we're going to get it. And it's up to us to make sure that we're prepared for that, even if it's a short week, so that we can go out there and, you know, have a chance to go 1-0 Friday night. be a little different this, Friday, this week, Coach, because – Travel. We, we, we've traveled to Cairo. We've traveled to Brooks mm -hmm. County. Those are short trips. This will be a little longer. This is a longer trip, and that's one of the reasons why we went to Dooley in the spring. Right. This is very similar to that trip that we took as far as we will have to load the truck, put all of our equipment, shoulder pads, helmets. We won't have that on when we travel. Uh, one thing that we are doing, we're going to stop in Tipton at the Cracker Barrel and eat a um, pregame meal there. So that's a little piece that we didn't do at Dooley. But – it's, it's that same kind of mindset, how we're getting to the game, making sure that, uh, you know, we're dotting all those uh, I's, crossing all those T's. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted that longer trip in the spring because I knew we were going to have short trips early in the year. Right. But I also knew that Jeff Davis, Fitzgerald, and Barry and were coming up in the travel, so we want to make sure we practice that. All right, Coach. We've played a lot of rivalry games. Those are all big games. A region game, though, is just magnified. A oh, it bit. is. It you is. Know? And when you play a region game against a good opponent, right. you know, everything's magnified. Right. Everything that you do, the good stuff's magnified. If you make a mistake, that's magnified. How you keep your composure, the adversity, all those things are magnified when you get to region games because these are the ones that determine whether or not you can win a region championship. Now, Coach, not having played for a couple of weeks, how does that impact us? We're hungry. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're <laughs> – Ready to play. It's uh, – they are really hungry, and I got a feeling that uh, whenever we do play, they can put the ball in the parking lot. My kids, they are going to be ready because they are foaming at the mouth to line up across from somebody in a different color jersey. All right, so dogs will be headed to Hazelhurst, and just like I said, like Coach said, check the Thomasville social media sites you know, about about the game game day and game game times, and uh, and uh, Coach, we need a good crowd over there, no matter. Yeah, come on, we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that the uh, you know the weather doesn't play a factor. So I need everybody in Thomasville to make that trip to Hazelhurst. I know it's a little a little far away, but we need that atmosphere and that energy. Yeah, 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 we do. And coach and I'll be back with the highlights of that next week.